Hello again and welcome to my studio. The past couple of weeks have been a momentous time for our military. When I planned to tell you about my days in the Air Force, I didn't anticipate there would be such renewed interest in the subject. But what a perfect time to invite you into the world of the U.S. servicemen and women and give you a little idea of what it was like. There's a lot to cover, so this week will just be about basic training. Now, I had to do some research for graphics because I didn't really have much time to take pictures back then, being all caught up in saving the world and all. One thing I found out is that a lot has changed since I was in. At the same time, there's a lot that hasn't changed for anyone in the service. Behind this curtain is something that will help us with this story. Sherman can tell you folks what's there. He calls it the way back. It's a time machine. <sighs> Now that we've seen it, maybe we should go back. Nope. These are the guys I went through basics with. This is my training instructor, Staff Sergeant Larry Shields. He was a really good guy. Most people go through the military in open bay barracks, but I was lucky enough to share a room with two great guys. This is Johnny Banks, who was the nephew of the great Ernie Banks of the Chicago Cubs. And this was Larry Foster, the nephew of heavyweight boxer Bobby Foster. We called him Chow Runner because he was super fast and would run up ahead of us uh, to let the Chow Hall know how many were coming for whatever meal we were coming for. I'll say a little more about him later as it relates to this fellow. Reginald Pugh. And on the far end of the group is my friend David Kennedy. No famous relative, but I know him. David and I would go through basics together in tech school and the NSA, on to Pakistan, and eventually back to Omaha, spending nearly the whole tour of duty together. There'll be more about him in subsequent parts of the story. So what say we get going on this trip? I hope you enjoy this video and we'll run right out and enlist. Well, maybe not enjoy it that much. I enlisted in Elgin, Illinois in the summer of 1967. At the time, I was finishing my first year of college. I was sitting in English class on the second floor of Renner Hall when I had a mystical experience. Really, I can see it as vividly today as I did then. I saw two people come in through the window carrying a huge Go Air Force sign. My recollection is that the draft board had just changed its rules so that students who had a 2S deferment would be reclassified 1A when they weren't in school. That meant summers. Now, when I asked Siri when the Vietnam draft began, she said 1969. Holy time warp, Batman. You mean I didn't have to enlist after all? Go ahead. Now, I joined the Army because my father and my brother were in the Army. I thought I'd better join before I got drafted. Son, uh, there ain't no draft no more. There was one? <laughs> Turns out that was when the lottery went into effect. In the summer of 67, Vietnam wasn't as bad as it would be in just six short months when the 68 Tet Offensive would blow the roof off that war. But it was bad enough for Ron Tarowski and me to take a different route. You'll remember Ron in the last video. Actually, Ron had received his draft notice, so we had to act quickly. He went in on a deferred enlistment one month after I did. I was sworn in in Chicago and flew there to San Antonio, Texas, and Lackland Air Force Base. Here I am arriving with confidence and swagger. Look, Captain Jim. Lucky. Wham, wham. Termites. Okay, that's not me. But when I got off the plane in Texas, there was a bustle of activity from a passenger who had deplaned just before me. Turns out Muhammad Ali was on the plane, too. Look at me. I'm loaded. I can't believe it. I had 180 hours to fight. 22 fights of fights. I'm pretty as a girl. If you recall, Ali had refused induction the previous March 
and would soon be going to prison as a result of his convictions. No, not that kind of conviction, although, yeah. But I mean his religious convictions. I felt no animosity for him, given that I was going into the service that he had refused. In fact, I respected him for standing up for his beliefs. Islam is a peaceful religion, not the way too many of us think about it these days. But we can't judge a religion by its violent members, any religion. But let's continue. I actually flew in on Braniff International, which is a now defunct airlines. It was a, uh, an orange plane, as I recall. And uh, it came in in the middle of the night because I was coming in from Chicago. It was a whole day of processing. I was dead tired. Uh, and I, I know they plan it that way. So you come in in the dark, you can't see what's going on. And I assure you, no matter what you do, it's wrong. And they will let you know in no uncertain terms. It's get on the bus, get off the bus, do this, do that. And no matter what you do, you haven't done it right. So have a look here at, at what it's like uh, to be on the um, receiving end of, of a Lachlan Welcome Committee.
arms are fully extended straight down. I shouldn't see any nighttime between your side and your arm. Five, four, three, count, one. Back over here now. Stay here. All right, you should be facing this way and that there. Go. So you're already dead tired. You're going to get a little bit of sleep, uh, but they don't want you to get too comfortable. So you're about to be awakened the way you are going to get awakened for the next six weeks. Although I, I guess these days it's like eight and a half weeks. But for me, it was six weeks. Every morning, I think it's at uh, 445, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this is how you're going to get up. And this is the way your day is going to go. Uh, join us for the fun. Get up! Get up! They will get out of the bed in the same manner in which I get out of the bed with a sense of urgency and speed and purpose for their day. The way in which they get out of the bed needs to represent what they expect to get out of their day. 57 trainees will have beds made dressed, shaven, teeth brushed, no less than 10 minutes. The stuff that you need to live on is so minimal right now. Everything is just so compacted and so quick and it throws you through a loop, but it just makes you realize a lot of things that you don't really need. And it makes it easier for me, at least, to, I'm not focusing on things like my cell phone or Facebook, anything like that, and just, it makes it easier for me to focus on them telling me stuff, and I still make mistakes, um, but looking at it, like, listen to them, get, get your stuff done, get out. Five, sir. Two, sir. Three, sir. Thirteen, sir. Fourteen, sir. You always have your few that are just, you know, top notch, physically fit, took care of themselves. Uh, you can tell that, that fitness was part of their daily regimen. You've got some that they come here thinking that, oh, this is boot camp. I'm going to get whipped in shape. This is, you know, they're going to do it for me. That's what they don't understand. So they come here not being able to do any push ups or sit ups. They don't realize they're not just hurting themselves in that facet for PT. You only did three! Let's go, Peter! I like to think of it as getting paid to get in shape, so it works for me. <laughs> I can definitely feel in my body, you know, I'm losing a lot of body fat. And kind of running off stored energy, my weight's decreasing.
When you first get to basic training, you're just a group of individuals. The way that they make you a unit is to make you all the same. And the easiest, fastest way to do it is to cut your hair so that you all look alike. Today we have a lot of issues over getting vaccination. When you're in the military, uh, it's not an issue. We're going to give you shots and you don't even know what's in them. You just do what they tell you to do. That's the way you want to stop. When recruits first get to the base, they're all in their civilian clothes. They're called rainbows. This is not a flattering term. So the way you first feel like you're actually part of the military is when they give you your first uniform. In basic training, there's only one way to get from point A to point B. You march there. Some do it with a little Seven. more flair than others. The physical conditioning program of the Air Force is designed to develop strength, endurance, agility, and coordination, and to promote confidence, aggressiveness, motivation, esprit de corps, and teamwork. This is called the confidence course, and it does what it says. By the time you finish this grueling nine-tenths of a mile, you have confidence you never knew existed. There are 19 obstacles here. Four of them are over water. You must complete 16 of the 19 obstacles to receive a satisfactory rating. Oh, hey, oh, hey. 
Sharp commands echo across the drill pad, and marching feet beat a tempo across the ground. Okay, listen. What's the most important thing today on the range? Safety. Safety. Remember that. Okay, get off the box ammunition. What I want you to do. After we were given a safety class, we were then taught to load our clips with bullets. On the rifle range, the three most important things are safety, safety, and safety, in that order. This is where we check our targets to make sure our weapons are zeroed in. We make the necessary adjustments and then fire from three positions, prone, sitting, and standing. As the airmen are introduced, please hold your applause until the last honor graduate is recognized. The top graduating airman of this class is from the 331st Training Squad. The 37030, led by Technical Sergeant Kenneth Lutnicki. From the 3708, Basic Military Training Squadron, Honor Flight 2 of 21, and by 2 of 22. Finally, the day that you've worked so hard for, graduation, and some people just can't contain themselves. But you, let's do a little singing this morning. Oh, 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 oh. Play, 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 feel great, feel great. Wine with us, wine with us. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Boom, check it like a boom, check it like a boom, check it like a boom. 